With only this race indicator left in the 2012 season, these are the championship points look. Anyone 70 points or more behind Troy Adams is out of championship contention. Cameron Taylor in second place is 94 points off of Troy Adams in the lead. However, he took 5 points off of Adams by winning the Delano Polo Art in the Team Timothy car. Uh, Team Timothy is the uh, one of the few Canadian teams in the series, and uh, you can bet the crowd was very happy to see them take old Dan Timothy, former TM Master Cup Series driver, has, has, has a pretty strong team as you see uh, Cameron Taylor get a pretty good start in that 68 car. Uh, the Team Timothy car was not regarded as one of the prettier cars earlier in the season, however that changed once they used a different shade of green on that car. So uh, clearly uh, the uh, Team Timothy is done torturing everyone's retina and they are worried about speed this season, much to everyone's relief. Here is Jim Hayes in the 07 car making a dive bomb in turn one and Buffy Boria now is running Hayes into the grass. So those two aren't playing nice uh, with each other and that's creating a bit of a stack up back here. As you see Troy Adams stuck here in what looks like Chicago Rush Hour or Talladega, uh, take your pick. Uh, Adams in the nine car can easily lock up the title if he uh, just sort of uh, plays it eat, uh, plays it patiently and gets into the point. However, he didn't qualify terribly well and it looks like he's uh, not really worrying about being patient. He is trying to charge through the field in this 20 lap race. Here is turn nine, as you see a little bit of contact there between uh, Archer Harris and, oh, Brooke Ingverson's around in the 16 car, and we've got some more trouble in the back, as I think Axel Andersen went off. That's um, Alec Collada in the 27 right there, side by side with uh, uh, James Davis at the 29 car, who's been pretty quick this year. Here's Roger Kendall, the blue and, uh, or rather, pink and black two cars. He gets punted by Nasa Tsunamachi, Dexter Hamlet, Zach Goddard, and, oh, Joseph Cummings fails to recognize that God's car is, in fact, a solid object and piles right into him. Heavy damage to the 71 car. Here is Troy Adams in the 9 car. Took it very, very, uh, took it very easy in turn 9 in that uh, car number 9. So uh, he's got a lot of cars in front of him that he doesn't really want to see there. Oh, big, big stack up here in turn 12 as cars are going all over the place. And I think Lang Chung Kun's got some damage in the 6 car. A couple of cars taking evasive action there. But Troy Adams in the 9 car is clearly trying to carve through the field as quickly as he can, get himself enough points to lock up the championship today instead of taking it to Decatur. But um, Adams in car number nine, he's working on Dexter Hamlet and Joseph Cummings, both of whom have proven themselves to be uh, sort of weapons of mass destruction on track this year, especially Hamlet. Here is Martin Baltno Jr. in that a uh, blue and black 96 car. And then one of the Rockers, oh, whoa, Eric Molina in the 21 car just hooks and turns the 96 car around. Uh, that was rather uncalled for. Eric Molina has not exactly been fast this season, and uh, Baltano, the winner at Peoria early in the year. Oh, Matoko into the pits. Car number 40, one of the title contenders, Matoko, into the pits early. Matoko has some damage. Here's another driver who's been uh, sort of bouncing off all the walls this season, Claire Ossier. Uh She's been a bit of a weapon of mass destruction. Will she be back with this team? Fairly likely. She won at Darlington earlier in the year, of all places. Troy Adams in car number 9 has worked himself up to 20th place after the first lap. Oh, he jumps the curb. Oh, he gets hit by Thurston Blood. Oh, he loses it. That's not what he needed to do. Troy Adams throws it off the course, and I think he's gotten it stuck in the sand trap. Troy Adams, disaster for the Australian, who's been uh, had a massive lead in the championship, but it's all sort of fallen apart in these past couple races. Slowly but surely, Troy Adams, let's see what happened here. And it looks like he got on the curb and got... Just hit the side of thirst and blood. I'd have to say that was sort of Troy Adams trying to outbreak the one car and just lost it a little bit after jumping the curb. But that's just sort of one of those unfortunate racing incidents and a mistake that he made. Oh, Joseph Cummings getting punted off the course because of the uh, 22 car Mark Blackwell who won at New Hampshire in the Unit 11 car. So Joseph Cummings has had a disastrous season. His race not going uh, too well either. Cameron Taylor can make up 70 points on Troy Adams, who is still in that sand trap. And if he makes up 70 points, that puts him right in the title hunt. And he could steal the championship away from Troy Adams, realistically. Archer Harris in the 79 car can also make up a lot of ground. But in order for him to really be in with a shot at the championship, he pretty much needs to win this race and the finale at Decatur to have a shot. Despite this, the Clayson Motorsports car has been very, very quick in the second half of the season. It's been a very rough week for Andrea Canassa off the track after the tragedy at Orange County Raceway, but uh, she's been doing pretty well this week. The uh, 426 Motorsports team is one of many carrying Scott Morales decals on their cars for uh, this race. 
She's running in sixth place, running behind Claire Osir, who's probably just going to throw it off the track anyway. Here's Buffy Borianaz running in 11th place. In front of Borianaz is Brian Morris in 9th, and Cesar Villanova in that gold car in 10th, uh, the uh, gold and blue car. Uh, Borianaz has been pretty quick in the PSI car. Here's John Jefferson in 14th place, and he's going to be out of a drive at the end of the season. He's doing a good job auditioning for a, dr a drive, but uh, a bit late to do that, perhaps. Mark Blackwell back in 25th place, so a little bit of an accordion effect there between Eric Molina and Ike Durbin, and uh, Blackwell uh, slowly trying to work his way forwards. Thurston Blood, last season's champion, won't be the champion this year, is running back in 20th. He is uh, losing a bit of ground, it looks like. This one car may have some damage after that contact earlier. As we can see, and Canasa has gotten by a Claire Osir, who predictably went off the track. And rejoined, that's Mike Anders in the 51 in 7th place, and Nathan Ferguson in 8th. So, if you've been watching the TM Lights and been keeping track of the season, I'd bring up the popcorn, because we're probably going to have a uh, collision here between uh, Claire Osir and Mike Andrews. That's pretty much what we've seen these two drivers do a lot of this season. The only driver to uh, crash more than the two of them is Ryan Griffin, and uh, his license has been revoked, and I don't see him getting it back anytime soon. Anyway, oh, they're actually racing clean. Well, that's a shock. I'm not quite sure what to say to that. Anyways, Troy Adams has rejoined the race. However, he is two laps down in 36th place. Uh, Troy Adams, uh, well, his disastrous, uh, disaster of day continues. Cameron Taylor in car number 68 pits on lap 6. Uh, that's, you, as you can tell, these cars don't have very large fuel cells. TM Master Cup Series cars don't have large fuel cells either. Anyway, here is car number 29, James Davison, who's running in second. Oh, contact in the pits between Davison and Ali Collada in the uh, in the 27 car. That is definitely going to hurt uh, the Davison car. There's a lot of left front suspension damage in that car. Nathan Ferguson stays out an extra lap. He's hoping to gain a lot of time on Cameron Taylor in this way. But he pits one lap later in car number four, driving for Leonid Roderick. So does Brandon Laurel in the 33 car. So it looks like the afterburner guys are rolling the dice on strategy as well to get them up the field. Jacob Card in the 133 car is out of the race with a big plume of smoke behind the EV Racing car. Not quite sure what he's doing next year, but he's been pretty quick this year despite EV Racing, uh, well, not being very fast. Here is Ali Collada in car number 27. She runs in second as Cameron Taylor still leads. Third is Archer Harris. Uh, fourth is uh, Collada. Fifth, Nathan Ferguson. Uh, as you saw there, the graphic that we're going to be seeing uh, Collada in the steward's office after this race. Uh, James Davison has dropped well down the order in car 29. Disastrous day for the Michigan winner. Here is Dermot Scott in car number 10. He's one of the big winners today. He's running a very good, strong race. He's up to 12th place in the uh, Evans Motorsports car. So he's been uh, impressing today. So is Mark Blackwell. He's been slowly working his way through the field. He's up to 21st. I wonder if next season he'll have what he and this team will have what it takes to win the championship and maybe move up the cup in 2014. We'll have to wait and see. With unit 11 as Ike Durbin in the 08 car, the Great Lakes Motorsports car. Uh, smoke billowing out of the back of that car. That's a team we might see um, perhaps running for the championship next season. Ike Durbin was a serious title threat earlier in the year. Oh, Archer Harris is out. Oh, another car has dropped out due to reliability problems. His valiant charge to the championship is going to end in a rather large cloud of smoke. Here is Cameron Taylor leading the race, and who would have thought earlier on he would be a legitimate title threat? He still has to score lots of points uh, here and Decatur, and that's not going to be an easy task. And he's pitting up on lap 13, and uh, is that cutting it close on fuel? One lap earlier, this is the 11 car of um, Justin Robinson in the pit lane. Disastrous pit stop for Robinson in the Unit 11 car. So uh, he's going to drop well down through the order. He was having he was having a pretty strong day. Nathan Ferguson won back-to-back -back races earlier in the season, and he led the championship for a while. But uh, he's really dropped off since then. He wants to end the season on a high note. And as you can probably guess, he is hitting one lap later than Cameron Taylor is. And uh, if you might have done your math properly, you might wonder that with the 20-lap race and uh, some people pitting every six laps, that means they may not have enough fuel to make it from here to the end of the race. So, but Cameron Taylor having a bit of a lead. Looks like he's saving fuel, so uh, his times aren't quite as quick as they were in the first uh, two stints here. Ali Collada in car number 27 is fighting very, very hard for second as she jumps over the curb. Oh, Ferguson is going to lose maybe a bit of ground to Kanasa there, but uh, oh, Kanasa! In the 05 car, very, very slow over there. Gonna see what happened here. 
Here's Andrea Kinasa in the 05 RB car, who's having a very, very good showing today. Oh, just gets him way too hot, tries to avoid Ferguson, and unlike Troy Adams, doesn't throw it off into the boondocks. Here is Claire Osir and Mike Andrews, and, uh, well, I've been expecting a not rather almighty shunt right here, but uh, so far these two have been putting on one of the best battles of the day. Um, here is Ellie Collada in car number 27 with just a few laps to go on lap 17. She bails for the pit lane. So the team says there's no way they're going to make it to the end, so they might as well pit for fuel. Martin Baltno Jr. in the 96 car just pitted for fuel as well. However, um, they were having problems with that car as he left the pit lane, and the Roderick Motorsports driver's day ends late in the day. Mike Andrews and Claire Osir resume battle here. As you see, Andrews get, trying to get around Osir in turn 9. Osir fighting back. The French-Canadian, uh, not exactly the popular driver over here in British Columbia, but she's clearly showing that she has the speed to run at the front of the field without crashing. Mike Andrews as well uh, in that 51 car, the Racing for the Community car, owned by Tyrone Stanley. Um, but you're going to see, oh, uh, Sear wide. Very, very wide, and Mike Andrews takes the place. But even a bigger disaster for Claire Osir would be that she would have pit for fuel. As you can see, top of the screen, Osir enters the pit lane. And uh, when he comes into the picture, Afzal Tamid in the 58 car is going to... Yes, there he is. Tamid pitting as well, the Pakistani driver. But, um, well, some cars having to pit late in the game for fuel. But one of them will not be Cameron Taylor in car number 68. He started on the pole. He's led all but two laps. And around the final corner, Cameron Taylor takes the win. And he puts himself in contention for the TM Lights Championship. Cameron Taylor... Uh, pretty good drive. It's exactly what he needed to keep his title hopes alive. And, uh, well, considering uh, his relative inexperience before this season, it's kind of hard to believe that Cameron Taylor is in contention for the TM Lights Championship. Nathan Ferguson, Andrew Canassa complete the podium. Strong run for Canassa and also Brooke Ingerson and Dermot Scott. Uh, Scott in a pretty good drive from the back, and Brooke Ingerson uh, got ran over on lap one, and she put the Matthews Motorsports car in 10th at the end of the day. So great job. Bry Brooke Ingerson, the Arkansas driver. Brandon Laro made the most of his strategy to come home 11th. Ali Collada and Claire Osir, as you can see, fell way down the order, as well as Roger Kendall, after Kendall had, uh, well, quite a few problems on lap one. A good recovery drive by Kendall in the uh, Black Diamond racing car. Thomas Cade in car number 15 rounds out the points paying positions as he comes home in 20th place in the uh, 15 car. And here's how the championship situation looks with only one race to go. Troy Adams and Cameron Taylor have only 24 points separating them. Cameron Taylor must finish well if he's going to take the championship in Decatur. And he must finish inside the top 10 and probably well inside the top 10 to be in with a legitimate shot. Ferguson in third and Blood in 10th. There's uh, not too many points separating them. So there's going to be a very good points battle inside the top 10 as well. I would not count out. A lot of uh, shuffling here in the championship, especially with some guys like Brian Morris and uh, Andrea Canasa, who I think could run very, very well at Decatur. Generally speaking, cars that run well here at British Columbia will probably run well at Decatur because they're very similar racetracks. The TM Lights finale will occur after TM Master Cup Series pole qualifying for the round of Decatur. And with both of the title protagonists entered for the round of Decatur, we'll have to see if that affects them in the TM Lights finale.